Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is David Benjamin from HealthyWildAndFree.com. Today I'm here with Jeff Copeland who has his own solar substation, correct? Yeah, you could call it that. We'll call it a substation then. And uh, as you can see behind us, it's there's 72 solar panels. And uh, I just thought it was kind of cool and I wanted to kind of interview Jeff and share some information with you that can help you out if you're getting started using solar or are just curious or interested in, in uh, solar panels and empowering your home and your property. So um, can you tell us a little bit about your background and kind of how you got into sustainable energy and, and your work in that? Yeah, I've uh, always been environmentally minded and uh, have always researched the energy, uh, alternative energy uh, industry by creating and building a lot of uh, equipment on my own. And so the technology that is here today is wonderful and works. And uh, so we've gone from simple shoebox and solar heating, which anybody can teach to children to get started on, to recycled panels, 4x8 from recycled uh, equipment for air heat, right up to the high-tech photovoltaics. Mm -hmm. So got started on it, playing around with it, and never left it. And your background is in environmental education. Through, uh, can you tell about the Jimmy Carter Energy Program and, and that kind oh, of thing? Back in the 70s and uh, early 80s, there was a program with uh, Jimmy Carter where each state was uh, given funding for research. And I worked uh, with the state of Oregon, or for the state of Oregon, uh, designing and developing solar energy. Mm -hmm. And he oversaw the whole program, so he obviously knows what he's talking about. Um, so, for someone looking to get started with solar panels, like what you know, what what are the first kind of few things they need to know? Where do they need to go to find solar panels? Uh, what uh, entities do they need approval from? Uh, and what do they do to get started? Stuff? Well, we'd be happy to help you. We're involved with uh, the network here in Michigan that you need to be involved with to be able to. Uh, put your energy online. So if you want to do photovoltaic and create electricity for your home, you're way better off doing that but contributing your energy to the grid and to your home, um, which is saving you all that money from battery storage. Being off-grid is fine if you can do it, but it's going to cost you a whole lot, you know, more money technology and maintenance where you can just put your energy into the grid and use that for your storage just like a savings bank. Mm -hmm. So like I say, you can come to us, we can help you with do it yourself, we can help you with if you want it installed and get you going in the right direction. Funding's changing constantly and mm -hmm. so we are in touch with the people that know what's going on with funding currently today. Mm -hmm. And that does change quickly. And is, is do you work with people mostly in Michigan then, I would assume, or...? Uh, with the Alternative Energy, uh, we're set up to go in Michigan. You know, we'll work with anybody uh, with projects anywhere that want to contact us that need help and send them in the right direction. A lot of people want to go with wind. David, how much wind energy do we have today right here where we're standing? Not much. Zero. <laughs> yeah. And most wind technology requires a certain amount of miles per hour, so unless you're in a good area, and we are on a ridge that people think is good for wind, but as you can see, um, when you only have so much uh, energy available by nature, you want to definitely invest your money into that form of energy that's going to give you the best return. Right. And, this is so solar photovoltaic for me. Mm -hmm. Solar heating also, mm -hmm. very effective. Mm -hmm. And I, I like that you mentioned that it's seeing it as an investment, because it is an investment. It's, it's, a, an, it's an investment. It's a financial investment, it's a sustainability investment, and like you said earlier, it's something your kids can carry on. And, and it's a commitment. It's right. a commitment to clean energy, because if we don't think about the future and we keep just burning coal, we're going to choke ourselves to death, is what is happening here. If you start to collect water or sample the environment and study what we're breathing here and know that all your energy you're consuming at your home is coming from fossil fuel or nuclear energy, that's not a safe form of energy. It's not clean energy. Right. So what we're really focusing on here is commitment towards clean energy. And this is a good example of someone seeing what it takes to power their home. Mm -hmm. Because you don't see the power plant. You don't see the coal and the smoke coming out. You're just right. turning switches on. Right. And you it's need to become aware of where is that energy coming from. Right. 
and is it killing me mm -hmm. to create it? Then I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So do something about it is really what I want people to do. Mm -hmm. And where where did where did you get your slow counts? I mean, is I there, built them myself. Built them yourself? It took two weeks to build. Mm -hmm. The whole mm -hmm. setup of the grid or the whole thing? The whole setup was two weeks from okay. starting foundation to turning it on. Mm -hmm. And um, like I say, we're very familiar with what's going on here and we're familiar with construction. Right. I know how to build things. Right. And wind, alternative energy, wind and solar takes massive construction because this is like a big airplane wing. Mm -hmm. And when the wind does blow here, we've had up to 85 mile an hour winds on the ridge up here. Wow. You know, that better be tied down. Right. And it's gone through, you know, winters. And winter's another thing. People think winter in Michigan, there's no energy. But remember, for photovoltaic electricity, mm -hmm. heat's your enemy. Mm -hmm. Because if it heats up, you're not making as much electricity as you could. So on a cold winter day, with the sun and the snow, the mm -hmm. reflectivity, the system's running great. Mm -hmm. We just don't have the same amount of hours of summer. But right. the grid works great in the winter. So photovoltaic is a form of solar energy that works better right. in like Michigan or a cooler climate that still has sunlight. Exactly. And what are the other forms of solar for other people that live in? Well, solar energy, you can heat your home, so you can create heat from solar. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to create electricity, you need photovoltaic. Those are the basic two forms of solar, okay. it's heat or electricity. Okay. So even in like Southern California or Florida, they use photovoltaic? Wonderful way to go. Okay. Yeah. Remember we were talking earlier about the technology that used to cost as much as the grid would produce, but today is included in the package, and we're monitoring each and every panel and inverter from the west coast here to get maximum production. So tell them a little bit about that. Uh, you, each panel is tracked online, basically, right? Through the computer and the electric grid, right? which is monitoring what I'm producing, and what panel is producing what part of it. Right, so you can see the which panels are producing more, how to maybe optimize certain panels. Yeah, depending to your weather curve. climate, you may right. have, like here we ended up up on this ridge here, we ended up with a lot of, more than the average lightning hits. Mm -hmm. And so they tweak the inverters. Now, mm -hmm. something interesting about the solar photovoltaic grid is technology's changing all the time. So this technology went online in 10, is now 30 cents on the dollar available before they're gone because 2014 our new technology mm -hmm. is improved right mm -hmm. and so there's another wave in the flow of energy that's not a grant but it's a huge savings at 30 cents on the dollar right, right. So technology's evolving energy is becoming cheaper the ability to produce sustainable energy is becoming cheaper and then you still have government programs that allow you to get uh, funding. funding and uh, can you, what did you mean from? Well, when in 2010, which ended May of 11, uh, we were with the DTE Currents Program, so mm -hmm. we were funded from DTE, and that's the part of the substation where we are contributing to the grid clean energy. That gives them REC credits, which means they've created some clean energy. Now right. they create their own clean energy and build the 3,000 panel grid up the road as their energy. So we don't get to kind of profit from that. We mm -hmm. don't get a break in our power. Mm -hmm. So by doing your own grid, you get to be part of that. Right. Would you mind sharing how much this grid would cost and then how much it actually produces for you? This grid back in 2010 would be about $123,000 cash uh, out of pocket for the initial inlay and depending on your funding you could go 38% um, DTE, 30% uh, federal tax return and 30, 25% USDA. So you can get high funding involved. We, we didn't get the federal tax credit because it's a credit. It's not a check. It's only if you owe the money. Right. And so I would have had to have $197,000 worth of income to get that credit. Mm -hmm. So you really have to be careful, which a big part of why I did this system was so that when I talk to people about grids that are serious about doing it, um, they don't get misled by a funding that might not be there. Right. 
yeah. because that Gets amount of money them. makes a difference. Right, yeah, definitely. And our recovery is about 10 years, mm -hmm. depending on each year's sunlight hours. Mm -hmm. Right now, the grid's producing about $6,000 a year in electricity. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much, you know, you need to... There's not much management involved with that, is there? I mean, it's pretty... Low maintenance, and remember, now that the technology's come a long way, we're being monitored 24-7, and mm -hmm. so that cost of maintenance is being taken care of by manufacturers mm -hmm. of the inverters. Mm -hmm. So if we have something failing, I'm notified. Right. Warranty, they come out, they fix it, or I do it myself. Mm -hmm. Very so cool. it's not like Comcast yet or one of your normal right, right. utilities, but we do work with uh, probably the most active people in the industry. Very cool. And do you have a, web, a website for A1 Organic Farms? That... Uh, A1OrganicLawns.com is our website mm -hmm. because we do the chemical-free fertilizing with mm -hmm. no poisons so we don't you know, kill people in the environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see our energy division there, where we've got a lot of wind and solar on that page in the website. Mm -hmm. And it's, what's cool about his property is he has, uh, all, everything is grown organically. He's got a bee farm that's grown without, or the bees are the beehive without antibiotics. No antibiotics. So, I mean, there's a lot of unique, sustainable, evergreen, uh, you know, uh, production going on here. So, uh, it's just inspiring. It's cool to see. I just want to share this information with you. Once again, this is Jeff Copeland. Uh, Google A1 Organic Farms or go to A1 Organic Farms. A1 Organic Lawns. Or, excuse me, A1 That's Organic okay. Lawns. A farm, <laughs> a local farm. <laughs> yeah, A1OrganicLawns.com and uh, take a look at his work and uh, get in touch with him if you'd like to learn more. Once again, thanks a lot for your time and uh, have a great day. Bye.